uh, there's nothing to do, that there's, we're past the point of, of uh, give and take is what I'm told Gary said when I was out of the room for a moment. You know, from my perspective, we have some proposals on the table um, and the response, at least at this point, is we can't accept them. And we're back. I'm Anthony Fury filling in for Brian Lilly. So that was Donald Fair, head of the NHL Players Association, and Bill Daly, deputy commissioner of the NHL. Looks like talks yesterday didn't go so hot. Apparently, they only sat down for about an hour. This has been going on for almost two months now, the NHL lockout. I want to head to Sun Media's national hockey writer, Chris Stevenson. He joins us in Toronto. Now, now Chris, I think I'm throwing you to the wolves here a bit because... I know viewers want some good news, but but I think sadly you you probably don't have any to deliver. Actually, Anthony, I, I I'm not as uh, maybe as pessimistic or down as a lot of people might be in light of the comments made by uh, the respective sides yesterday. Uh, I still think that uh, what we're seeing is going through a negotiating process, and a lot of times when we hear Donald Fear or Bill Daly come out of these meetings. Uh, I think you have to take uh, a lot of times what they say with a grain of salt. I mean, a lot of this is about posturing. Uh, a lot of this is about uh, trying to win public sentiment or for whatever value that might have to either side. So I think right now there is still time to have some kind of season in the National Hockey League. Uh, folks might want to remember back in 94, 95, the uh, first lockout under Gary Bettman. They wound up having a 48-game season that I think started somewhere near the end of January. So I, I don't think we're quite right now um, down to the short strokes. I don't think we've seen either side's best offer yet. So I'm still hopeful. Maybe I am a voice in the wilderness, but I'm still hopeful that we are going to see some NHL hockey this year. But Chris, two months. I mean, I don't know who they're kidding that they're going to win public support for, for, from anybody at this point. Either side clearly, clearly is not going to gain from from the average viewer. I think, you know, the, the level of frustration among the fans this time around is much different than it was back in 2004, 2005, when we lost an entire season. I think at that point, many fans could understand the philosophical ground that was being staked out by the National Hockey League, and that's that the league needed a salary cap. It needed to completely revamp its economic system to, uh, to make it a, a, a worthwhile business for the owners. Well, we lost an entire season, uh, they got their salary cap, and now the owners are coming back and saying the system still needs, the system still needs tweaking. Um, uh, I think this is going to still be a difficult and long negotiation, but you know, you say two months and the fans are frustrated, um, I think we still got a little ways to go. I still don't think the real crunch time is going to come, Anthony, for about another month. I think, it, month. I, think it, I think at that point, the, the, the pressure on both sides to get a deal done and save you know, some kind of, of season, which I think needs to be in the area of about 50 games, I think the middle of December, if we don't have a deal, then that's when people can still really start worrying about us not having a season. Uh, Chris, let me be a pessimist here, though. If three months rolls around, I mean, the nature of the nature of not the game, but the nature of the business of the game has changed a bit since since the last lockout you refer to, and that now we're seeing people who it's not the hometown boys. We're seeing guys who come from Russia. They're paid millions of dollars. The first moment they get a chance to fly over to the other side of the country and leave their supposed home team, they do. I mean, three months later, are, aren't isn't there a chance fans are going to say, you know what, forget about you? I think there's a very good chance that that happens, and I hope. Both sides are considering that as being a very serious matter for the league. I mean, uh, a lot of the Players Association's proposals, you know, the league has been a roaring business for the last few years. I think it had growth of about 9% two seasons ago, growth of about 10% last year, um, to the point where, you know, revenues are now a record $3.3 billion. I don't know if both sides are really understanding the damage that they could be wreaking on the game right now. And all of these financial models that they're talking about, which are still projecting some kind of growth, um, they might go right down the toilet because it's going to be very interesting this time to see the reaction of the fans. In 2004, 2005, after that lockout, they flocked back to the game. And you could not buy a seat in Canada and in most of the cities since the lockout. Rinks have been sold out. It's going to be very interesting this time to see what the, uh, the reaction of the fans will be. Like I said, the last lockout, you could see what the battle was about. The owners wanted a cap, and I think a lot of the, uh, the uh, fans agreed with them. This time, I think the fans are angry that they look at it as, 
You've got all this money and you can't figure out how to split up $3.3 billion. We wish we had that problem. Chris, la last question and about all this anger that's brewing. Some people complain about player greed, but by and large, Batman is painted as the, as, the, as the villain here. Is that entirely accurate? No, I think Gary Bettman's doing his job. I mean, his, his job is to, to maximize profit and probably more importantly, maximize franchise values for his owners, for his 30 owners. And if you look at the league under Gary Bettman, as I just said, record revenues of $3.3 billion last year. The, uh, the value of the franchises since he has taken over has been on a constant upward swing, um, due in large part to the fact that they did get their cost certainty with a salary cap. So, you know, you can hate on Gary Bettman all you want. He makes himself an easy target a lot of times with his body language and, and his condescending attitude at times. But I think for his 30 bosses, the 30 members of the National Hockey League, the owners, uh, I think he's done a pretty good job. Chris Stevenson in Toronto, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome, Anthony. Folks, tell me your thoughts on that. You can email me, anthony.fury at sunmedia.ca. I got to tell you, I know the minimum salary in the NHL is like 500 grand right now. I'm sure you or I would be uh, quite happy to receive that. Maybe there's something I don't understand here.